Hi everybody, Jude here. <clears throat> no makeup, no jewelry, nope, just just me in living color. <laughs> um, I got a little box of jewelry in the mail this week from someone I had purchased from. And in it was this little card. And it says, it's okay to cut loose. And normally we think of cutting loose as, you know, giving up our inhibitions and just like, you know, getting up and cutting loose in the dance floor or something like that. But this little card has been sitting here by my laptop for the last few days. And I keep looking at it and I keep coming back to it. And I decided I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about cutting loose. <laughs> um, basically what I want to say is that during these difficult times, it's okay to cut loose. And what I mean by that is, it's okay to cut loose from old paradigms. It's okay to think to yourself, you know, when the world opens up again, I don't want to go back to the way that it was. I don't want to go back to running on the hamster wheel of productivity and go, go, go and work a day, workaholic for a company that, you know, doesn't have my best interest. Um, one of my sons just recently went through an experience during all of this where the company he was working for was refusing time and time again to put in appropriate safety um, measures. Refusing to social distance, refusing to do masks, refusing to sanitize, ref all, all kinds of things. And they, the employees, you know, and my son push back, push back, push back. We need this. We need you to do this. We need corporate cooperation, you know. And the bottom line is it came down to the supervisor saying, listen, I pay you to do a job and you do that job and if you get sick and die because you're doing that job, that's not my problem. My problem is that you do your job. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, well my son no longer works for that company, you know. He just walked. He was like he went through all the appropriate channels, human resources, yada yada yada, but the the words had been spoken. You know, we don't really care about you. So I'm thankful that I raised a son that knew that that was wrong and that had the courage to walk. I really am. I'm proud of him for that. And he has another job now and it's a much better job. So things work out. But it's okay to cut loose from people that aren't treating you well or jobs that aren't treating you well or to think back about what life was like before everything came to a screeching halt and think about what do I want to return to? What do I want to cut loose from? You know? It's okay. You know what else is okay? It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay. I thought about doing this video this morning and I thought, you know, Jude, if you're going to do a video, you should really, like, Put your makeup on, put some jewelry on, get it together. Um, I am dressed. <laughs> um, and I thought, no, because what I want to talk about is it's okay to not be okay. And honestly, this morning, I didn't feel like putting any jewelry on. I didn't feel like putting my makeup on. I didn't sleep last night. I had terrible nightmares. And I was up writing in the middle of the night um, about the experience. And I'm tired and I'm worried. 
and I'm concerned about friends that are going through some really difficult things on top of difficult things. And I'm still worried about loved ones getting sick. Yeah. <clears throat> then I had another experience this week where uh, 11 years ago, 11 years ago, I was part of the one of the founders of a theater company. And we produced a couple of really, really good shows that I am very proud of. But the whole ship sank <laughs> because, um, yeah, we had someone that kind of, you know, I guess you'd call it extortion. They took the money and ran and left the rest of us high and dry and um, left me in the place of having to tell everybody else that we were high and dry and so I was the scapegoat at the time <clears throat> and um, it was a, it was a bad time it was a really tough bad time you know when you're betrayed by people that you trusted and that you called your friends and but anyway one day this morning, I, I got up, I, I logged onto my laptop, and there was an email, a private message actually, from someone whom I had blocked years ago that went through that experience with me, but who took a very defensive mode rather than a supportive of me and us mode. We've had this done to us together. He took a very um, defensive mode. And I got this long, um, out of the blue note from him that said that during this time of pandemic, he'd been cleaning out his house and cleaning out his mind. And he came across some old emails that we had shared and that he was reflecting back on this time and how difficult it had been. Um, how difficult it had been for me. Max, I want you to stop talking. Shh, shh, no, no, stop please. And how um, he was sorry. He was sorry after looking back after 11 years. He was sorry and he said I didn't need to respond but he just wanted me to know. I cried like a baby when the came came like, after 11 years to hear him say that he was sorry was just overwhelming. And I thought of responding right away, oh, don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't. I said, no, Jude, let this sit. Let it sit and simmer and... and let the flavor of this whole thing come out, you know? It's okay for people to reflect upon what's not been okay. That was not an okay situation. He was not okay with his response to it. He was not okay with what it had done to us. And he is finally able at a place to let it cut loose and to say, hey, look, I'm looking at this in a different way, you know, and I'm not okay with the way that it went down. And um, I'm grateful and I'm very respectful. Max. I'm very respectful of him for taking the time to write me and to say that. Maxie, I don't want you barking. Shh. Um, But I'm not going to quickly jump to saying, don't worry about it, you know? Because I think it's good for both of us to acknowledge that we weren't okay with the way things went. And that's okay. It's okay. It's okay to say, listen, when someone checks in with you, I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping. I'm, I'm bored. Yes, I have tons of books 
Yes, I have tons of housework. Yes, I have tons of art supplies. Yes, I should be, could be, would be doing stuff, but I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it because I have a deep inner sense in my gut that something is not right. Something is very wrong here. And when you have that deep sense in your gut that something is really wrong, it's very hard to just go on and look. <laughs> It's going from bad to worse. Just go on and pretend that everything is normal. It's it's really, truly not. Nothing is normal right now. Nothing. None of this is normal. And I put something on my Facebook the other day. I know Vanessa really enjoyed it. I had gotten it from somebody else. But it talked about how, you know, sometimes people say that expression, um, well, we're all in this ship together. We're all in the same boat together. No, we're not in the same boat together. We may be in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat because, um, you know, what I'm dealing with, what my son was dealing with, what you're dealing with, what other people I know of are dealing with. I have a friend who's completely stuck in Peru and, and absolutely cannot get home to the States. That's a totally different situation than what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. Um, he hasn't had a hot shower in three months. He has cold showers, no hot showers. Um, pretty much all he eats is eggs and fruit. Um, that's all he can get. Uh, and crackers and tea. and that And that's it. For months, you know, and yeah, I can still go out to my kitchen cupboard and pretty much get any food I want. Um, yeah, sure, there's some limitations at the grocery store. You go to get one thing and you have to substitute it with another, but when the end of the day is done, I still have devil dogs in my cupboard. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> um, the number of people that are enduring domestic violence right now you know, I don't have to deal with that. I've never had to deal with that. And I, you know, so for me to say, well, I understand where everybody's coming from on this. No, I don't, you know, because um, there's always going to be somebody in a better situation and there's always going to be somebody in a worse situation. And we just have to really be compassionate with each other through this. And... You know, I've noticed I'm not a really patient person to begin with. A lot of people think, oh, Jude, she's patient. I'm really not. Um, I'm really not patient with people in a lot of ways. Um, and I, and I, I'm just trying to be honest with you about that. Sometimes people's foibles, <laughs> um, you know, um, Things they say irritate the bejeebers out of me. Um, behaviors, you know, and I can get really snarky and say, you know, have a comeback. And I have to really bite my tongue and sit on my hands when I watch some chats without saying, what you just said was really rude or, or you know, whatever, you know. And um, I'm trying really hard, but I know that a lot of us are feeling that little extra bit of snarkiness or irritability or um, testiness. <laughs> you know, you can see it in all of us in the chats and stuff online. That's okay. It's okay to cut loose, <laughs> and it's okay to not be okay. It really, really is. And... Um, all I can say, just in closing, is find things in every day. It doesn't have to be a big thing, but find something in every day that you can love about life, you know, that can ground you a little bit. Um,
I've been wearing big, thick, fuzzy slippers all winter time in the house. Um, L.L. Bean main made slippers. <laughs> and I realized that in doing so, you know, it's been a long time since, because I'm a barefoot kind of girl, it's been a long time since my feet have just touched the ground outside barefoot. You know, it's been months. It's been snowy, for one thing. It's finally getting to the point now where I can go out my bare feet, and that's good. That's grounding. That's um, that's nurturing. Um, you know, um, maybe you know, maybe making a pot of tea in your best teapot, even though there's no one, <laughs> there's no one to impress. You know, you're home alone. Maybe making a nice pot of tea in your best teapot and sitting down and having a beautiful cup of tea in a beautiful china cup. Maybe that'll help you celebrate life today. Um, maybe taking your... Um, I don't know, we were talking the other day in one of the chats about people that collect stones and crystals. You know, maybe taking your uh, crystal or stone collection out or whatever you collect, Russian pins, whatever. Get that collection out, dust it off, hold each one of them. Appreciate what it was about those things that you appreciated. Um, to begin collecting them in the first place. Um, maybe you didn't get to go to your favorite... Uh, May Day celebration this year. So you go online and you look up one that happened last year and you participate virtually in that wonderful thing. You know, I have some places this year that I love that I associate with summertime and happiness and they're not going to open this year. That's okay. Allow yourself the time to reminisce in your mind during this quiet time about the wonderful times you did have there. And even if your memory isn't accurate, even if you've romanticized the whole thing and it was far more fun and far more glorious than it was in reality, so what? So what? It's your memory. Enjoy it. You know, nurture yourself. Um, be good to yourself during this time because it, it really is okay to not be okay that's just all I really wanted to say today and I thought I would prove it by exposing myself in this horrendous situation <laughs> okay guys I'll talk to you later bye